Okay, so this is monohybrid inheritance. So let's start again with the definition. Monohybrid inheritance is the inheritance of a characteristic which is controlled by a single gene. So this could be in plants, something that uh, I'm sure Mendel looked at. We have maybe a dominant allele T in plants for tall, and we could have the recessive allele little t for dwarf or small. And we're going to look at the examples based upon these alleles. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay this out in a nice, logical, organized way, because if you don't, it's very easy to get your alleles and your genotypes and your phenotypes all mixed up. So I'm going to represent parent one here in blue. And I'm not going to call them male or female. I'm going to call them parent one and parent two. Parent two is going to be in green. Now, as you progress through these, there's basically two stages you're going to need to know at each step of the way. The parent's genotype, the first of all. So remember, parents are going to be diploid, which means they're going to have two homologous chromosomes and one allele on each. So they're going to have two alleles. The second thing we're going to need to work out all the time here is going to be the parents gametes and we're going to need to they are obviously haploid they've done meiosis and so they're going to have one allele okay so far so good so let's pretend that our parent one you're nearly always going to be given the initial set of uh, conditions are going to be homozygous parents so let's take our genotype for parent one as being big t big t homozygous dominant, and then homo uh, parent two, homozygous recessive. Now, this, when these go through meiosis, you're going to have one allele. So you're either going to have this allele or you're going to have this allele. In, obviously, for uh, if they're homozygous, then both our alleles are going to be the same. I'm going to draw my gametes surrounded by a circle just to differentiate them. Now, let's cross these together. So parent one breeds with parent two, and we call this the first filial generation. You might've heard fillies with horse racing uh, is a term used. So it just means the first offspring, the F1 generation. And this type of diagram I'm gonna do here is called a Punnett square. Now, some of the textbooks, some of your teachers may get you sort of doing lines, crossing this gamete with this gamete, and it all gets crossing lines, and it doesn't make any sense to me. It's confusing. Forget about it as far as I'm concerned. If it makes sense to you, practice it. Make sure you can do it correctly, and no worries. But I think a Punnett square, the old school way, is definitely the easiest way of representing that. So I'm going to draw my parent one alleles in blue across the top. So we've, we've got two big T's and my parent two gamete down the side and now we're going to draw a grid and fill in the gaps okay i'm going to read my parent one first but the dominant allele the big letter needs to come first so in this situation we're not going to have that arise because the big letter is always going to go in first which is parent one the blue so this is what we're going to get whenever you cross homozygous dominant with a homozygous recessive you're going to get 100% heterozygotes in the first filial generation. What else can we say? We need to know what the genotypes are. Well, these are all going to be heterozygous, and the phenotypes are all going to be tall. That's it. So this isn't very interesting, but what we get when we get a bit more interesting is that we can cross the F1 generation with themselves and we can produce what we call the F2 generation, the second filial generation. And this is when we can start to see some trends coming through. So again, I'm going to use my parent one and my parent two, and I'm going to draw them in the respective colors. So I'm now going to forget my, my blue and green from over here. I'm going to represent parent one is heterozygous. It's going to be in blue and parent two is going to be heterozygous represented in green. So again, my number one is my parents genotype. And my number two here is the parents gamete. So we're now going to split these. So we're going to have one big T allele and one little t allele from this parent. And we'll have the same over here. Now I'm going to lay it out in exactly the same way. So I have my 
blue across the top, and my parent two down the side. Okay, so I'm going to do it again, parent one first, parent two second. So this is a big T, this is a little T. Now here, I'm going to follow this column down first, but you need to represent the dominant allele first. That's the way that it's generally done. And these are both going to be recessive, so this one can go on, on the left. You're going to be doing this in one color. So it doesn't really make too much difference. As long as you are nice and logical and you're putting your dominant allele represented first, then that as long as it makes sense to you, then that's fine. So now we need to look at what the, the F2 generation brings us. So we're going to put the genotypes. Well, let's look at this. We've got one homozygous dominant. We've got two heterozygotes. And we've got one homozygous recessive. So what about then about the phenotypes? These are going to be asked for in either a ratio or in a percentage. So we've got tall and we've got dwarf. So in a ratio, we'd represent three tall, which is obviously the homozygous dominant and both of the heterozygotes, three to one. It could, as a percentage, you'd obviously say 75% are going to be tall compared to 25%, which are going to be dwarf. So that is might not seem too complicated. The monohybrid intelligence, you're not going to be asked too many questions because it's quite straightforward. But you must be able to do this consistently and make sure you're not making any mistakes and understanding why you have two letters for the genotype and why you have one letter for the gametes. Remember, this year the, the course is going to be synoptic. They could ask you meiosis questions at this point because you are expected to understand meiosis even though you studied it last year. So make sure you can do this clearly and now we're going to move on to dihybrid inheritance which is slightly more complicated but again if you're logical with the way you lay things out and you're consistent you do it the same each time you're not going to make those stupid errors that cost you marks all those vital marks on the exam